The next thing I want to talk about is the Lakers. So, what should the Lakers do now? I know they a lot of people was talking about them getting Darren Collison. Darren Collison is not he's agreed to not come out of retirement for the Lakers or just for any team in general. He's not coming out of retirement. They didn't make any trades on the deadline. So that kind of like hindered them. But buyout season is around the corner, if not now. Uh, there are some people who I've heard around that is possibly getting ball- balled out by the teams. Reggie Jackson, I heard Deion Warriors' name has been circling around as well. And those are guards. Jamal Crawford is still in free agency. He's still not, he's still not signed to a team, which I think is criminal. Uh, if you ask me, he averaged, uh, I think, what, 30-something points in the month of April last season when he played for the Suns. Yeah, which, I like I said, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, because you can see in the way the Lakers play that they need an extra ball handler on their team, an extra, like, score, a person who can get a shot on their own. Because one thing about the Lakers, when you look at the way their roster is built, they do have some – I can't even say they have some good three-point shooters because they're not even that strong of a three-point shooter team as they predicted to be at the beginning of the season. But they don't have as many shot creators on that team, which I feel like is a problem. Because a lot of people say, well, if you have LeBron on your team, you need to build that team around with – like a good three point shooters because LeBron can kick it out. But on most of his teams, if not the teams, if not all the teams actually, where he won a championship, he had somebody on that team that was a good shot creator who can take the load off LeBron. We see that in Miami with Dwayne Wade and Cleveland with Kyrie Irving. These are two players who are good shot creators who can take that load off LeBron, who can handle the ball, who can run the offense when LeBron's not there and take control of the team and score on their own will without the assist of LeBron. I think the Lakers are still having a problem with that. Granted, Anthony Davis is there, but Anthony Davis is not too much of a shot creator. He has to be fed the ball. Anthony Davis not bringing the ball down the court, calling somebody up, calling plays, like calling for isos, doing this and that. He's not doing all that. Anthony Davis is taking his shots, being fed in the post, uh, shoot threes, which he did a lot in the last game against Denver. He shot a lot of threes, actually. Um, He's not that shot creator. He's a good big man, a great big man, probably the best – Big man that that LeBron had played with. But in terms of being a shot creator, which always fares well for LeBron James in terms of, like, winning and getting a championship, he doesn't have it on his team. It's not Danny Green. It's not Avery Bradley. I know we point to Rondo, but Rondo is not as efficient of a scorer to be that shot creator that LeBron wants. He can kind of take the load off LeBron as a guard, but he hasn't been doing it as well this season, especially with injuries that's been hindering him a little bit. Uh, he's been a little bit inconsistent throughout some games. So that's been hurting the Lakers uh, a bit this season. But other than that, him and Andy Davis are actually playing well this season. Uh, LeBron uh, LeBron James averaging excuse me, 25 points on 49% shooting from the field, uh, seven, seven, about eight rebounds per game, and leading the league in the NBA in assists with about 11 assists. 10.7 to be exact. Andy Davis, who's playing well as well, well as well, who is playing phenomenal as well, I should say, with 27 points out of per game, 52% uh, averaging from the, field, from the field, and about 9.2 rebounds uh, per game as well, as, along with 2.4 blocks as well, which is third in the NBA. So they're, they're, they are a good duo, but like I said, outside of that, what is... Do we what else do we see from the Lakers? We'll see. I know watch from watching the Lakers, they do the same like kind of over the play. They'll do a tip. Javel runs into the basket. LeBron gives him a lob. That's usually the first play of the game if of every time I watch the Lakers, at least to my me- recent memory. But outside of that, Danny Green hasn't really been producing as much. I heard his name in trade talks for the deadline. They like I said, they didn't ultimately ultimately made a move. But Outside LeBron and AD, what else does the Lakers have? Kyle Kuzma has been pl- hasn't been playing as well. And I get into an argument with my friend George about like how Kyle Kuzma is not the star pupil that the Lakers organization made him out to be. Because we point to a Brandon Ingram who's balling right now, who's actually an All Star in New Orleans, and we point to Alonzo Ball who's been playing pretty good in recent games. He wasn't playing as good to begin the season, but he has been playing good recently. So it makes you think that like. Was Cal Kuzma the, the piece that they really wanted to keep? Especially with him kind of playing the same position as a LeBron James and Andy Davis at the four and three. His minutes were going to kind of like 
hinder him his and his success, and maybe that's probably part of the problem. But because we've seen in some games where Andy Davis is not playing, Cal Kuzma does play where he does shine. But you would think, and I guess it's kind of hard for him because he is a younger player, for him to adjust and find his footing because he is playing inconsistent, very inconsistent with his game. And I know a lot of people was was talking highly of Cal Kuzma, talking about how he's a smart player. He's playing like he a grown man because Cal Kuzma came into the league as a fourth-year senior, where a lot of these players you see nowadays are fresh out the draft as a freshman. So he had kind of that edge over some people in his draft class, and they was talking about that about him. But with him this season, he's not doing too much, averaging around 12 points, um, not too much in rebounds and assists either. So it's like, what is it? Like, is he the piece that they need? Do we need him to flourish? Because he hasn't been able to flourish so much this year in the, in the system. And injuries kind of held him back a little bit early on the season. But to my knowledge, he hasn't been injured as much recently. So what is the true problem? Like I said, they need another shot creator on this team to take a load off LeBron. Because LeBron is playing heavy minutes, heavy minutes still. And you hear this every year. Every year since even, even when he was in Cleveland, like they talked about – well, LeBron's not playing as much minutes. We're going to take the load off of him. And it always ends up being more of a load on LeBron James each and every year. Like they said this year that with AD there, LeBron not going to play as many minutes. But LeBron played 41 minutes last game against Denver. Granted, it did go into overtime. But you would think that he would play less minutes. Like, say, if we. Because overtime I, it was what, like what, five minutes, five, six minutes, I should say. So he, if you mind, you deduct that from 41. If you go on by six minutes, that's 35, 35 minutes. And you would think that LeBron would probably play like 32 minutes. And I know a lot of you probably be like, oh, that's only three minutes of rest. Like, what does that do? I'll go, I'll go a lot in the game, actually. Three minutes of rest will actually go a lot. But LeBron, he's been playing extreme like minutes. I know Ed Davis had been injured like for some parts of the season as well as LeBron. LeBron's had some games too. But I know Ed Davis has challenged LeBron and him and uh LeBron have been going back and forth and like challenging each other, making sure they stay on task because like I said, without them two, they're not really doing much. Like the Lakers ain't really doing too much on his team. Like Danny Green's not doing as good. Uh, on the offensive side, uh, especially in def- and defensively as well, but he's he's still a good catch and shoot, but not as de- he's not as defensive stout as as he used to be. Um, Avery Bradley isn't doing as good. KCP was playing better as the season progressed as he did at the beginning of the season because at the beginning of the season I was like, get this man out of here. <laughs> this guy was playing terrible. Javale McGee and Dwight Howard are still a bright spot on the team, but. A lot of the things that I feel like is a problem for the Lakers is not more so of their inside play, but more so of their outside play, their three-point play. That's been something, their perimeter play, I should say. And that's something that be, they've been trying to fix for years, like years. A lot of people, like, they have been trying to accommodate for and fix. But I think if they get another shot creator, I think if they, in this buyout season, they get somebody like a Deion Waiters, who who I think played well coming back even even though he got like that stuff going on with the weed and the and the brownies and uh having anxiety attacks on the plane because of that. There he there is some good in him still because when I watched him play against the Clippers a couple a week ago, a week or two ago, I think. He played well. Played well still. So I think he'll benefit being on that team. I seen the J.R. Smith was working out for the team as well. Or Jackson, like I said, a point guard that can help take up the load off uh, for LeBron. I think it'll be a good pickup for them. So we just gotta see where the Lakers go and what Rob, excuse me, what Rob Linker does to fix this problem. 